Well, we are here for the very first episode of a show we're calling The Narrative. Come on, somebody make some noise. <laughs> Man, it's been such a long time coming. Um, I became a pastor and I just kind of went into hiding. I guess that's what happens, right? You go into ministry and you kind of disappear for the glory of God. Yes, for sure, <laughs> um, for sure. I, we had a show called A Greater Story, and, and this podcast, this platform, this television show is a part of it, but it's a new show called The Narrative. We say around here all the time that when your story connects to God's story, it leads to a greater story. Mm -hmm. With so many stories out there, we want to get the story right. Mm -hmm. Come on, can get I just... Right. <laughs> I practiced get that right. one. Get it right. <laughs> okay? Uh, and so this is The Narrative. Uh, my name's Sam Collier for everybody watching. And I'm the host, I'm the founder of A Greater Story Ministry, Story Church, all the above. But who we are here with today is an incredible friend of mine, mm -hmm. a brother of mine, someone I used to drive around when I was 16 and he doesn't remember. <laughs> but God was forming a friendship and a relationship um, through mentorship. Mm. Never did we know that we'd be reconnected wow. 10 years later arm in arm doing ministry together. I actually have a friend here, um, Ina, she's like in the back. You can see her, she's waving, hello. <laughs> I've, t I've told you this story before. Um, this is the truth, but I'm gonna reintroduce in a second. Um, I've told you this story before. I remember where I was the first time I heard your very first single, On Duty. Okay. <laughs> same, same old blocks. Same old blocks. <laughs> D different, but still the same. Like, like plain clothes. clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Ina's car. Wow. And we were at church, and it was when you had to take the CD player and hook it up to the tape player. Aux. With the the aux. aux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't quite an aux. It, it was an like aux. the, it was, you put oh, the, the tape. The, 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 oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, what, who is this? You know. <laughs> and so it's surreal to be here with you, to be here with Ina, to be here with the family. 10 to 20 years later, man, just, yeah. um, dreaming and watching you shine mm. like never before. Wow. This is a big moment because you've come out with an incredible album. Yeah. And the album is really a reintroduction to you, but it's the evolution yeah. of the truth. Your name is going away. Yes. <laughs> Artists formerly known yeah, this is a as the moment. truth, yeah. <laughs> now being birthed as Emmanuel. Yeah. Can we make some noise for that? Come on. <laughs> Emmanuel! I gotta say this. I gotta say this. You're gonna talk in a second, but I, okay. I wanna give you your flowers. I, I'm pulling up the phone because uh, I want you to know I listened to the album. Okay. Boom. Emmanuel is the album, and this is a huge album um, because Fred Hammond is on it. Yeah. Todd Delaney is on it. Mm. Dante Bo, yep. Greg Cox, Tamala Mann, yeah. Miranda Curtis, Myron Butler. Kim Burrell, Rich Tolbert, yeah. Tamala Man again, yeah. Yolanda Adams, PJ Morton. What is going on? <laughs> and I just wanted to stop. I need every, come on, just look in the, wherever you are. This is a huge moment. You don't have gospel albums, Christian hip hop albums, even mainstream albums with this many features. Yeah, it's a lot of firepower. <laughs> Three years in the making? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give us the story just really quick. Yeah. You know, I know you want to say hey. And no, uh, no, no, no. Two-time Grammy nominated Christian hip hop artist. How many Dove Awards? Uh, three Dove nominations. Nominations, eight and stellars. Four, four stellars. Four yeah. <laughs> okay, I got you. How many albums? I think this is the 13th. 13th, 13th album. Yeah. Oh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story, man. Um, yeah, so I started working on this this album in the pandemic. Yeah. I think we all did stuff in the pandemic. Y'all probably worked on albums in the pandemic. <laughs> everybody, everybody was working on something that, that was like right. their inner child. Or like. <laughs> um, so I started working on it. Greg and I, we, he, um, he, he went out and actually got this software. Who's Greg? Oh, Greg Cox, sorry. Producer, mm. um, songwriter. Incredible, vocalist. incredible job. Oh yeah. my gosh, he's just incredible. Yeah. And 
he went out and got this software that, because um, we were trying to do it over the phone, and you know, it was just, it was tragic trying to, so he got this software that allowed for me to hear all of the instrumentation directly into my ears. Yeah. And we literally spent probably eight to 10 hours every day during the pandemic just working out ideas, fleshing out ideas. What a lot of people don't know about me is I'm actually a producer first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Musician, so musician producer. And so, drummer, drummer. They used to call you the animal. The animal. Okay. <laughs> I actually had like the animal shirt, and then yeah. you press the button. Yeah. And like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's a, but they called you the animal because you hit the drum so hard. I hit so the drum hard. really hard. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's kind of like my personality. It's like, yeah. it's too, it was too much. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> So yeah, I was going to go to Berkeley College of Music. You know, um, I had a, a partial scholarship to University of the Arts. Uh, that was really going to be my life, music. And um, somewhere along the line, I ended up stumbling onto this hip hop thing. You know, there was a mistake. And um, the moment that it kind of got serious, uh, music began to take a back seat. Well, music as I knew it began to take a back seat. Right. And um, what I didn't realize was that later, all of that musicianship, because four years um, I was in. For my four years in high school, I was in the music magnet program, so Overbrook High School, third, Overbrook. Um, yeah, third highest ranking um, music magnet program in the entire country. So I was there for four years, and then from there I went to college, and my first year in college was for music, and then I ended up going to New York to play with a musical. I, now it was a bunch yeah. of stuff. I was a recording student, so the whole nine. So Overbrook I'm, is in Philly. Overbrook is in Philly. Connected Will to Will Smith. Smith. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. We won't, we won't. Yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> <laughs> got it, got it, got it. But Will Smith and I went to the same school. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Born, wait, what's the line? Born and raised. West Philadelphia. Okay. Born and raised. That's your story. Play, that's my story. Wow. Playgrounds is where I spent most, most of, of my, my days. days. Chilling on Max. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, so Philadelphia, Philadelphia. <laughs> I'm playing um, <laughs> so music as I knew, the way that I thought yeah. it was going to happen. Yeah, um, didn't. What I real, what, what ended up happening was all of the musicality that I had kind of gained over the, throughout the years ended up kind of finding finding its way into the, what I'm doing now, hip hop. Wow. Which is why my music. Music sounds so musical. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and let's, th let's take a pause right there because yeah. I feel like when you listen to the album, Emmanuel, yeah. I mean, it's strings. Yeah. It's, or, I mean, time changes. Yeah. And if, if you're not a musician, you may not notice it, but if yeah. you are a musician, you're going, whoa, we just, <laughs> are we in three, four, and then we yeah. went to yeah. what, six, uh, five, yeah. like, yeah. what is happening, y'all, yeah. you know? So you can hear all that musicality. I mean, I, I just want to say, again, I, I I don't have this power, but I just want to, I mean, I feel like it, it's award winning. Yeah. The album is award winning. Yeah, you know, there are certain projects out of 13, about four of them I felt like you, and this is one. Mm. You know, the artist knows too. You know, when mm. you get to the end of it and you're like, yeah, I think this is award winning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This is pretty, pretty good body of work. I got a question for you. So, yeah. 13 albums, there was an album a few seasons ago you and an apologist and you haven't had as many feet like when you go through your body of work it's not a ton of features on yeah. a ton of stuff mm -hmm. why so many features on this one which is amazing yeah. I'm like again three years in the making I remember when we were in the car riding around you were like man I, I got this is what I'm working on with PJ and Fred I'm like how do you know all these people but <laughs> you know like why all of the, you know yeah well first of all I just the fact that I can you know you know that these are like you know just these are friends of mine Mm. is um it's not that's not like a light flex that's just like i'm honored and humbled by that reality um and being able to just put a call in or shoot a text without going through the red tape yeah <laughs> and saying bro yeah yeah <laughs> i yeah. got this idea can i send it to you <laughs> this is actually the third song i sent to kim burrell mm -hmm. she hated the first two so <laughs> <laughs> she I hated like, the first like, two. Sis, what I, I need you she's like all right send it i was like cool i sent it Radio silent. <laughs> <laughs> try again. Yeah, try, try, try again. I did yeah. it again. So this is the third attempt. She was like, I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> now, okay. okay once... I'm going to answer that question. Okay, no, okay, okay. You, you go, you go. Because <laughs> so, I, I got another question. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So as far as the, um, you know, for me, uh, features are partnerships for me. Um, I don't need, it's hard for me to even think of them as features. You know, I see it as, Really, when I hear a song, or I hear it get an idea, a melody line, um, uh, 
there are certain artists that, the first thing I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about is, because I have to demo the, that, the song, I have to right. demo You're the, singing. the chorus. You're yeah, I'm singing, singing the song. And I'm like, okay, so I can't do this, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, I have the idea, yeah. but I can't, I can't be the one singing, or Greg might sing it, right? And Greg can't be on another song. He on 15 songs already. Right. So between the two You're of like, us. Like y'all in the studio, yeah, Greg, yeah, just yeah, sing yeah, it. You sing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, but you know, what happens organically is you begin to go run through the Rolodex of your mind and think about who best fits this moment. Because that's the goal for me. It's not like who is the most high profile artist I can get. I don't think that way. I think about what artist, um, you know, fits the moment. What artist can help me to create a moment for the listener? Um, and kind of cr craft an experience yeah. um, for the listener. And so, you know, that's literally my process. I know it's a lot of big names, but for me, I would go with, I would go with a smaller name if they provided the experience for the people. Yeah. And so as I was working on this album, you know, um, when, I, when I was working on Free, I couldn't help but think about Kim. When I was working on gray hair, you, who else could you hear on gray hair but PJ? I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, who else can you hear on King except Fred? It's like oh, nobody else. We're going to get to that. Okay, so, wait, yeah. stop, so stop, 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 stop. Because you know that's so my let song. Me finish, let me so my point is, oh. I have to, I have to, for me, I cannot compromise the integrity of the music. That's what it is for me. It's, I have to, I have to honor the music. And so the question that I'm always asking is, who will help me honor the music here? Mm. And thankfully, it's always high profile. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, it's Fred. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's make some noise. Let's... I love that. <laughs> we got to honor the music. Yeah. What a line. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is a great segue. I'm going to come back to the album, but I'm going to press pause. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, one of the things that this album represented for me, knowing you personally, driving you around when I was 15, <laughs> you not remembering and then us reconnecting. <laughs> you did remember, okay, at some a, point, a sliver. A sliver. <laughs> but I, it, it should be said that you were doing this in every city. So when we talk about the idea of longevity, mm -hmm. and we think about, you know, because there are people watching that are going, man, you can just pick up the phone and call Kim. You can. Yolanda Adams is on the record. Like, what is? Mm -hmm. These are people when they walk in the room. They go, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's yeah. Yolanda Adams. Yeah. Um, but the reason that you can do that is because you've been doing it for so long, mm. faithfully. Mm -hmm. And I love that line on and honoring the music at mm -hmm. every turn. So, so for me, this is big because uh, if, if anybody's been following your journey, we had Vet which was a previous album. Yeah. I think it was two albums ago. Yep. We had Chasing Ghosts. See, I'm a See, fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know I knew. <laughs> now we start getting to three or four. I, I, <laughs> but but um, that was kind of your reintroduction after a massive hiatus. But this kind of feels like your reintroduction to the industry. Mm, Jesus. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You were at the Grammys recently. Yeah. And. There was something about it. I, okay, let's. I'm gonna go to vet. Okay, I'm, this is this is for truth fans for a second. On vet, mm -hmm. you said I'm not worried about awards. Yeah, I'm done chasing awards. I'm, I don't care about. I just want to get back to when it wasn't about the numbers. Yeah, that's what you said on vet. Yes. So you kind of looked at the Grammys and the Stellars and the Doves, and you were like, uh, I've I've been there. Yeah. Because if people follow you, they know that you are considered as one of. Yeah. Christian hip hop's pioneer, C H H. Yeah. You a pioneer. Yeah. A living legend a month ago. Stop. 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 I'm glad I remembered that. Because I was in the car riding, I was like, man, he's a legend. <laughs> and he's just a homie. We at Starbucks eating sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich. <laughs> but let's not lose the honor for what God has birthed through you, mm. um, the reintroduction. So, so, so you have this period of your career where it's, ah, yeah. awards, 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 awards. How many city tours with Kurt? Oh, 40? Jesus, no. Uh, I toured, uh, was it uh, 82 cities? Mm. 82 cities, 82 around cities. the world. Around the world, yeah. Rome? No, we didn't do international, it was, yeah. all, it was all domestic. But you've toured in Rome, I yes. think. Yes, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I've toured 
every, every continent. So yeah. I toured every continent. Yeah. Um, tours, awards, all of this. Yeah. Ah, massive. Yeah. And then you kind of just went away. Yeah. And then you came back. Oh, yeah. I'm just in a vet. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, he's back on the red carpet at the Grammys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, if anyone knows anything about the Grammys, you can't just walk into the Grammys. It's a music-led, you yeah. know, operation. Yeah. So you have to be a voter. You have to be this. You have to, you have to qualify, all these other things. People don't, you can't just walk up to the Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> but because you were nominated twice, yeah, yeah. that puts you in a lot of spaces. Yeah. That happened, even though it happened a while ago, it's like, oh, I'm kind of right back. And you mean, you're in pictures with your friends. We had a personal conversation. <laughs> you're texting me on the red I carpet. Was. I'm like, you're on the red, get out of here. <laughs> because that's just not you. You're like, I'm on the red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? He's hit you right back, bro. <laughs> I hit you right back. And then you, you were at some strange party. Oh, yeah. Oh, and no, you were no. like, why am I, why I, am I at this party? party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so many things going on. But it's a reintroduction. And I, I've said this to you um, offline. It, you know, the space that you operated in Christian hip hop, um, it, there's a lot of spaces that have been filled, which has been amazing. We want to shout out Lecrae. We want to shout out sure. Trip Lee. We want to shout sure. out the whole Reach, Andy Minio, For the whole sure. Reach Records movement. Yeah. But there was a unique space that you operated that was just was never filled. Yeah, yeah. And now, and it's that space, and we're going to talk about apologetics in a second. But it's that space of contending for the faith yeah. through music and being able to toe the line back and forth. There are a lot of rappers that are Christians, and I'm talking a lot, I'm legit. There's a lot of rappers that are Christians um, that don't want to be considered Christian yeah, artists. For sure. I and mean, that's okay. Yeah. You do want to be considered yeah. a Christian. And so it's a, there's a little bit of it. So yeah. it's a unique space. Mm -hmm. Um, you got criticism for going to the Grammys. <laughs> yeah, I did. Let's just go ahead and talk about that. Okay. okay? <laughs> as, as we talk about, okay, okay, talk about the reintroduction to the industry. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And how you navigated criticism. And you're an apologist, which yeah. this is what you like okay. to do. Yeah, so this all comes together. Yeah, yeah. so to talk to us. <laughs> so um, my reintroduction to the industry has been um, really cool. One of the things I discovered is that um, no matter how you know busy you are, how many shows you sell out, if you're not seen in industry spaces, people don't know you out here. You know, so that's been interesting. People are like, oh, you back? I'm like, I've been there. I just played a six thousand seater, <laughs> you know, but yeah. they just, you know, people don't know unless they see you in certain spaces, which is really eye opening to me for me this year and um, actually really encouraging because I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's go. Right. I'm, I'm going to be in every industry event for, <laughs> for the next five years. Right. But the reason why I backed out of the industry um, was because I had grown disenchanted with it. Um, you mm. know, it's industry is industry is industry is industry, whether Christian or not. And so it all carries a lot of the same challenges. Um, industry is very, um, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance. Um, there's a lot of, that's not all it is. There are some good, so let me qualify sure. the statement here. Obviously, there's some, a lot good about the industry. Right. But the part that gnaws at you, the real person, the part that gnaws at you is the pomp and the circumstance, the fluff, um, a lot of empty promises, empty conversations. Um, wow. You know, in fact, even when I was, you know, at um, the Grammys this year, part of my the Bible says um, that Jesus was standing on the mountain he, and he looked out and he saw Israel and the Bible says that he is, his heart was wrenched for them and he filled with compassion mm. because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. Wow. And so be, even being at the Grammys this year, I had a moment when I was at certain Grammy parties where I was looking around when I was surveying the room and I was like, oh, the people are so empty. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dressed and everybody looks amazing. And the, and the music is incredible, but everybody's so empty. And I, just, the, just the, I felt the anemia of the soul. Like, just, Dude. oh, you know, there's a lot of bravado, but you're thin, you know? Internally, emotionally thin, spiritually thin. And so I had a lot of those moments this, this year at the Grammys. Um, but being back in the industry was really exciting, just by virtue of the fact that I understand now, okay, I have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was good that I was away for the time that I was just because I got, I got a chance to miss it and get rejuvenated. And so this year, going to the Grammys, um, coming back, I did not expect this, I'll be honest. But um, 
Oh, my, inst my timeline was riddled with, has, it's still to this day, six days later, riddled with criticisms from the body of Christ. And uh, uh, the, a lot of it, I, let me tell you something, for the first time, because I am an advocate for the church, um, I do believe that the church is the bride of Christ. I believe that we have to be careful how we talk about her. Um, I believe that the bride of Christ should be honored regardless of our indiscretions and, um, and our, you know, our clear brokenness and ambiguity. Um, our checkered past and all the things. Yeah. I think that the church still is to be honored. Amen. Um, this year was the first time that I felt like, ooh, these church folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's dive deep a little bit. And I think, good. It, it's the narrative. We want to get the story right. Yeah. <laughs> um, part of it has to deal with, there, there were many individuals that said they were like a, demonic seance, yeah, so like for sure. some things happening oh, at the sure. Grammys. Yeah. So I felt like this year was more um, uh, heightened, I for guess. For sure, yes. The controversy then, oh, yeah. then passed. And that's, you know, we, we've got friends at the Grammy Association and mm, yeah. we know that they're phenomenal people. So this is no knock on them. Yeah. This is just a, certain performances had certain things, Christians and you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think this, this year, um, what Here's the interesting thing, and the people that I went with, you know, they were taken aback by all the, all the things that were happening. There was a lot going all on. All the details. <laughs> there was a lot going on. <laughs> it was. The thing was, I, I actually, um, I was unmoved. Yeah. I was unmoved. And it's not because I'm desensitized. I could be, but I don't think that's what it was. I think it's because nothing happened that I didn't expect to. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a student of culture today, uh, <laughs> worst things are happening <laughs> in music video. There's certain things that are happening in music videos, you know, um, that one that made what I saw at the Grammys actually less impactful to me, because I felt like I had seen it. You know, there was a music video that was very similar to Sam Smith's performance mm -hmm. um, that killed the, you know, all of 2021 was the talk of the, you know, however many millions of views it got is. You know, it was a cultural moment. And so that performance, you know, I got it. I get why people, you know, certain sensitivities were. So I get that a thousand percent. But I personally wasn't taken aback. Uh, I just felt like, oh, this is why we're here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt, you know, I felt, and that's what I felt in the red carpet too. That's what I felt at the parties that I attended. I felt, this is why we're here. Um, it's the, um, this, is the, this is the Jesus at the table with the publicans and the sinners, you know. Um, this is Jesus attending the, the weddings and the feasts where there's drunkenness and debauchery. Um, you know, um, and this, you know, this is where we get to shine our light in a different, in a different context, mm -hmm. in a different way. And so, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of debauchery for sure. There were a lot of things that were dishonoring to God for sure. There was a lot of sacrilege for sure. Um, but I think it's par for the course. I think that's to be expected given the current cultural climate that we're in. And so now that I know, now that we as the people of God can identify that that's what this is and that's what it's going to be and it will not get better because that's what the word of God says, that over time things will not get progressively better. They in fact will get progressively worse in the last days. And so my expectation is not for things to get better. And so now what we have to do <laughs> is take a step back and begin yeah. to think what is our responsibility? What is it that we can how, how do we now engage this culture in light of where they are? And um, yeah. Well, I think one of the things that we often miss is the, you know, the Grammys isn't a religious institution. Not at all. It yeah. is a shell, yeah. if you would, um, for all types of music around the world. Yeah. And they come together and to your point, that's why it's important that we're there. Yeah because our music genre is represented and we're able to be in that space. I, I heard a Christian artist who was talking about this. He was, he was getting heat too, right? He, yeah. He, 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 now he wasn't one like, he was screaming on Instagram. <laughs> Y'all that, you know, he yeah, was yeah, going yeah. crazy. He, got, <laughs> he, he was saying, what was that, um, that thing where Obama had the translator? Oh, the anger translator. The anger translator. <laughs> he, was like, that, he was my anger translator. He was your anger translator. <laughs> um, but 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 he talked about. He said, you know, he said a statement that I that I thought really encapsulated the moment, and, and it echoes what you said. He said, if you're not called there, don't go there. 
Yeah. 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 For sure. If you're not called there, don't go there because you won't have the grace. Uh, yes. To exist. Yes. In the space. Yes. And I mean, I don't want to go too far, no. but go. Um, we talk all the time about being prepared. Yeah. Um, for the to engage dark forces. Yeah. I think um, a couple points I want to make. One is, and I just want to go back a little bit, people also have to understand that the worst part of the Grammys is not the total sum of the entire um, week, let alone the entire show. So I think to, it's also unfair to pigeonhole the Grammys and to um, really kind of, um, what's what I'm looking for, take one or two performances and characterize the, and entire, characterize the yeah. entire thing on the basis of those two performances. Because there's a lot, other, lot more things that happened that were actually pretty dope <laughs> <laughs> that we can all appreciate. So I do want to say that. Yeah. And to your point, um, just about engaging dark forces, you know, um, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think that it's interesting. Well, I was at one of the Grammy parties. Um, and, and I sent you some of the videos. I couldn't show that footage to everybody. But <laughs> I was like, was, oh, there was a lot happening. <laughs> you're, in, you're in a unique space. <laughs> yeah, I was in a unique space. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. And we're not calling Sam Smith anybody dark. No, person. not at all. Yeah. Not at we're all. Just not, saying, I didn't want to qualify. I'm glad you said it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just the expression in yeah. the way that it was interpreted. We're not making any statements about anybody. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thousand percent. Yeah. So um, I think that. Um, oh, this moment, I was, I was at this Grammy, the Grammy party, I sent you the videos for, and um, it's interesting, God walks up to me, because you'll be, in, you're, it's, you'll be um, I'm, I'm always shocked at how many people know me in those spaces. Right. <laughs> you know, and they're like, what, you know, what's up? You know, yeah. you still doing the Christian thing? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, ah, you're yes. The, yeah, I'm like, ah. <laughs> What's up, boy? What's up, right, bro? right, right, right. <laughs> you still doing toxic news, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I'm no, playing. I'm playing. I would never say that. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever. <laughs> you still talk about you still women? Talk about women <laughs> being misogynist? Right. Okay, stop, 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 stop. I'm just playing. I would never say that. All right, bring it back. Bring it back. Edit that. All right. <laughs> anyway. Um, so in midway through all the madness, um, God walks up to me, hey, bro. I'm like, yeah, hey, <laughs> hugging it up. Right. He's like, bro, you know, honestly, I grew up on your music. I'm out here in LA now, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, dope, bro. He was like, bro, I got some questions for you. The music is blaring. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's a party. It's a party. I got questions for you. I was like, all right, what's up? Man, I'm trying to find <laughs> Man, I want to find my purpose. I'm trying to find my purpose. I don't know how to find my purpose. But you can tell it's gnawing at him. You can tell like it's. And I was like, um, I said, okay. <laughs> talk to me about some of what you've been wrestling with. And man, we talked for an hour and a half in the middle of the party. And this is the part you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. These are the moments that escape the critics. <laughs> and it reminds me of LeBron James's famous quote about the man in the arena. Hmm. As, as long as you are making an assessment about a thing from your ivory tower, it's always easy to be a critic. It's not until you're right in the middle of it that you really get an understanding of, oh, this is the call. This hour and a half, because it, we, we didn't stop at purpose. We started at purpose. <laughs> we didn't stop at purpose. And by the time that conversation is over, that guy wants to know, how can we keep talking? Mm -hmm. You know, and these are in environments where that's what I'm saying. You just never know. Now, now, if you're partaking, if you're, you know, if you're partaking and you're, you're joining in and you're a cup, that's obviously problematic. But I do think that just in terms of what it, and it made me think, it's, it literally made me think, this is why I went to school for apologetics. <laughs> this is why I did it. Right. Because what it taught me was the art of engagement, how to successfully and strategic engage with people that have barriers. Mm -hmm. And I'm in an environment where it ain't nothing but barriers. Mm -hmm. But the same people with barriers always also have questions. And so what apologetics does is it helps you to find the middle 
and pull, the, pull all those two things together. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do I connect with the person who has deep existential questions, but barriers that keep them from hearing what you have to say about it? And that's what apologetics has helped me to do. Yeah. And so um, this year was just really different for me. And I really enjoyed it. It was really purposeful. And I can't wait for the next mainstream secular event. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's make some noise. Let's make some noise. Well, I want to make one statement, and then we get back to the album. I, um, I, I think a through line of everything that you're saying, I just kept hearing the word humanity. Mm. You know, we, we got to. We got to get back to that, to, to this point as Christians where we're able to see the humanity mm. right. of Jesus. someone on a Jesus. journey. Oh, Jesus. And remember mm. our journey. Mm. Yeah. I forgot, we've got, uh, I got a lot of friends here. I mean, if, if you scan the room, some of these people, you see them on albums and you'll see them in the future and they own commercials. And we strategically, you know, ask for them to be here because we wanted um, uh, the body of Christ to be here, but specifically leaders um, to be among us as we kind of wrestle with yeah. these topics. Yeah. And so scan the room, follow them on Instagram. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things I think for all of us, it's like all, I got friends here that knew me when. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got friends here that walked up to me and said, man, I, whoo, <laughs> you a pastor now. Look. <laughs> If God can change, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, man. It's like, but when, it's, when, you're on the, when you were on the red carpet and when you're having those conversations, all I can think about is, man, I remember when I was that. Mm, yeah. 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 You know, and I wasn't an evil person. Yeah. I just didn't know. Mm. I was learning. I was growing. I was a product of what I, what I was around. Mm. I, I was struggling with my traumas and with, you know, with my environment. Yeah. And, you know, we're not going to talk about being black in America and yeah. what that means. Yeah. And, and trying to, you know, I'm like, I grew up on Wayne. And, you know, yeah. it's like, that's how I learned about women. And Montel Jordan is a friend. I listen Ooh, to that song every Jesus. day. Yeah. This is how we do. I said, this, yeah. is, this, is, this, this is, is how we, this is how we do. do. <laughs> this is how we do. It's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> and the party <laughs> on the west side. Exit cheat that thing. So I read from my, I'm just kidding. So, so, but I remember, I was, listen, I was nine wow. when I heard that song. Mm. Wow. Jesus. I was nine. I, I'm in therapy now. <laughs> all of us are, right? We, we talk about therapy all the time. Yeah. Um, but I remember, and then we get back to the album. Because I do think all of this is in line with many of the themes in the album, oh, this, this, sure. I, this idea of becoming. The, the whole yeah. switch from truth to Emmanuel yeah. Yeah. Is, is a journey of becoming, yeah. Yeah. you know, mm. what God wants from you in this new season. Yes. There's a new season. There's yes. a reintroduction. There's a, there's a new grace. There's yes. a new mantle. There's a, yes. there's a new sound, yes. and you can hear that. Mm. Um, oh. But I, rem I remember being in therapy and we were just going back on my childhood because I was trying to figure out why I did certain things. I'm like, why? And I remember my therapist said, you know, you were probably too young to hear that song. Mm -hmm. Your brain didn't know what to do oh, with it. Jesus. And so when we, again, I'm just yeah. red carpet, addressing yeah. the critics. And if you're not called yeah. there, don't go there. It's like, man, the, and uh, please, it's, I just want us to get back to seeing the humanity in people. Oh, because I feel like it would really help us love them well. You said it. <laughs> Man, I, um, I, no, so much of this project is that. Jeez. It is, the reason I, part of the reason, I mean, you know, one reason why I changed my name is because of what it means. You know, God is with me yeah. and God is with us all. Um, and another reason why I changed my name is because it spoke to uh, the evolution, which for me was, I feel like the truth kind of had all the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. And I, <laughs> <laughs> please go ahead. I, I, I'm going to comment. Go ahead, please. 
Um, and um, Emmanuel was just, I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's that statement. It's like, the, I, I've heard theologians say this. The more you learn about God, yep. the more you realize you don't know. All, all day and night. All day and night. Because the, a lot of what I thought I knew about God was very uh, boxed in. So I had God in like these categories. Like, yeah. oh, this is who he is all the time. In fact, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the same yesterday, today, and forevermore were the boxes that I had created mm -hmm. for him. So that's the interesting thing about when people say he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, the question is, what do you think that sameness is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that sameness is oftentimes the, built around these constructs that we build up based on, you know, things that we learn about him through various things <laughs> that are, that we filter through our worldview. And so for me, when those, when uh, some of those constructs begin to kind of get dismantled, <laughs> you like, Dude, the deconstruction, your, deconstruction, your system is shot. You like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought he was only this. He's this too. But I thought he was only, I thought he was more like this than that just found out last week he's more like this than that. Um, once you start going through that process, once I started going through that process, I really did come to a place where I'm like, the truth is not that it's not true of me, it's just that it's not what leads anymore. I'm leading now with more nuance, more uh, understanding of the complexities, more um, humanity more, I'm just the bro, like, <laughs> mm. you know, um, Bible says that Jesus was our, he is our elder brother. That's a fascinating passage if you think about it, mm. that Jesus, it seems too familiar. Mm. It's like, wait, why, why are you, why are you minimizing who Jesus is? The book of Hebrews literally says he is our elder, but he's the older brother. <laughs> And Emmanuel feels very much to me like the elder brother. I'm just a big bro. Um, I don't claim to know it all or have all the answers or to get it all right. And that's not an excuse to get it all wrong. It is just to say that I'm clear um, about my frailty and my humanity now. And what that does is it sobers me uh, and helps me to connect with other people's humanity. And so, and last thing I want to say, which is not as deep, but I do want to say this. I was also at the Grammys because I wanted to be at the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's make some noise. <laughs> We're not always on mission. <laughs> You're not always We're not on always, mission. We're not always on mission. And you went and you, and you went and I got went a and suit. The yeah. I went and got a suit and enjoyed the grand yeah. music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I knew how to filter it. Yeah. 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 Can I just say one more thing? Okay, we gotta give it. But okay. I, since we're talking about truth and Emmanuel, I, um, we're, we're rounding third base. We're gonna end with some favorite, some of your favorite moments in the studio with some of our favorite artists. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, you're our, one of our favorites as well. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about this because. I've had a, <laughs> it's, in, it's just so, in, I met you when you were truth. Yeah. <laughs> I met weird. you when you were like an Old Testament prophet. <laughs> you was like this or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I remember <laughs> playing you something one, I was 15, I'll never forget this. I remember playing something and one of the, pa you know, pastors cursed on the pulpit to make, yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. like, For sure. it's like they try to like, you know, the word hell is in the Bible, yeah, so yeah. they like try to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, and then the A word yeah, A yeah, is yeah, in, the in the Bible, they're like, let me, yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. and, 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 the, and the crowd loves it, and they're like, ah, you yeah. went in. <laughs> You're like, but you just, can't. <laughs> and I remember playing you something because I was excited, and you said, whoo. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> right? Blasphemy. You know. No, yeah. Um, but you were, but, and that was a large part of um, how you, not, not how you built, but a lot of 
the audience that you built, and that's one of the things you're even navigating now. I am. It came from that really that 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 super legalistic place, mm. but also, I mean, you went to Oxford, yeah. right? Mm. Seminary, all these other mm. things. You're a brilliant mind, and you had to go on that journey to develop yeah. this really um, deep theology. Yeah. And understanding the scriptures back and forth. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, yeah. you be, you know, I think we, uh, was it you? I, I don't know if it was you or if it was KB. Uh, we went in the car and oh. somebody was talking about, no, it was dudes. Uh, yes. And he started talking about, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started talking about names in the Bible we yeah, never yeah, heard yeah, of. Right. He said, what? Like, we gotta read our Where Bible. is that at? <laughs> you know, that's it. Um, and so, but so you went on this journey and it's interesting that now you, you're even deeper when yeah. you transition to Emmanuel. And it, it, it seems as if the deeper you've gone, the more humble mm. and meek you've become. Mm. And, and that's inspirational because I think for all of us, you know, when we first get saved and we give our life to Christ, we're in this space where we're just, I wanna know everything, I wanna know everything, I, I wanna get it all right, I wanna get it all right. And we feel as if the deepest version of ourselves is here. Yes. So yes. I know this, I know this, and this yes. is what it says, and, that, and, that, and yes. I can call this, but what you're showing, and this is obviously with Jesus, right? Yeah. The yeah. L- last shall be the, you know, yeah. the least shall be, all yeah. these, the yeah. servant, humble, all these yeah. other things. Yeah. The greatest among you shall be the servant. Yeah. Is it, what you're showing us is no, like, the deeper you go, the lower you go. Mm. Jesus. Mm. And yes. Emmanuel, I mean, that's your actual name. That's my actual name. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels as if it's like truth. Yeah. Emmanuel. Yeah. Emmanuel, you know, and so. Yeah, and it's interesting because right now I'm in the Emmanuel phase and from the vantage point of my supporters because they're like, they, they, they much, they enjoyed this guy better. And so a lot of them see this as um, a compromise. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, you know, I just have to stay consistent because they're like, you know, we want, <laughs> Hard news, and I don't even want, I wouldn't call all of it legalistic. I would just say, of course, some of it was for sure. Some, all some, day, not all, all. Yeah, 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 not all, not all. Yeah, but some of it was just, um, I, I'll put it this way, and I was just talking to a brother um, here tonight. You know, certain things, I have industry friends that, you know, our relationship is mended now, but it wasn't always because I was arguing everybody. <laughs> I was in the green room on tour arguing with everybody. You just, <laughs> Dude, what, can you give one example? No, I'm okay, not okay. examples. <laughs> <laughs> no names, no names. No names, uh, but like we'd be on tour together, they'd be up there, and I'm, talk, and I'm talking like tour tour. Yeah. And they'd be up there and they'd be singing, and I'm sitting up there exegeting the song. I'm like, that's so unbiblical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we fall down, but we get up. But, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Are you saying we fall down like to be licentious or use it? You know, that's what I was. <laughs> and so um, I, was, it was, I was in all the green rooms just going in, just ah. In their face. Just in their face. Yo, yeah. Now I wasn't twit. I wasn't, I wasn't subtweeting. <laughs> I was like, so I'm really trying to reconcile. And I'm sitting there trying to like, they like, why are we doing this? <laughs> And I just want to go eat. <laughs> I just want to eat. <laughs> um, and but what I've discovered is that hit, the truth of the matter is this. Let's just say if I was let's say I was right. Yeah. Part of this evolution is not um, forgive the double negative, but it's not not knowing that you're right. It's knowing how to pick and choose your spots. And it's learning whether or not this is a conversation you need to have at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, like in other words, another person can, let's just say the theology is off. That's all right. I mean, <laughs> unless it's heretical and people are, you know, really being led astray by, you know, okay, then I think that has to be dealt with because watch your life and your doctrine closely. So there's a responsibility and a mandate on the leader for that. The teacher is under stricter judgment. So yeah, from that vantage point, however, if it's just, eh, I probably wouldn't have said it like that, but it's all good. Let's go get chilies. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. What well, is the reason? It's a, like a million different it's denominations. Everything, do, everything doesn't need to be addressed. So part of it is even with the Grammy stuff, the way that I addressed it online was because um, I, I went back and forth for like four days. Like, should I say something? Because they just coming at me. They are at my neck right now. And normally I like to stay above the fray and not say much. 
But I just was like, I feel like I have to say something because they won't stop. And so what I said was, um, I, my post, I, my first post, I said, um, first I started to do like a live like Kirk did for the Grammys. He did like a live and it was like 45 yeah. minutes. And I was like, nobody want to hear me talk that long. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people don't know, I meant to say, people don't know how close you and Kirk are. Oh yeah, yeah, you're very, oh, that's fine. Yeah, like a that's spiritual family. advisor for him yeah, and then y'all are family. family. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin, okay. for sure, for sure. So he, so Kirk, um, I'm sorry, I looked at Kirk and I said, I don't want to do that. I thought about it, I was like, that could be one way. Nah, that's going to be too much. So I just did sound bites. So I did Grammy Combo 101. Yeah. First thing I said was, I said, um, I said, the one thing I want to say is that Christians have to be known for more than what we hate. Mm -hmm. Christians have to be known for more than what we hate. Yeah. And I'm going to leave that there. Boom. That was Grammy 101. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And the reason why I'm grateful I took that approach because what it then what that does is it stirs up the conversation amongst the people. Mm. Does that make sense? Um, and so I think you know for me it's just it's just been a journey and coming. So I'm saying to that to say it's been a journey and coming to this place, but it's a journey for my supporters too because they're like, mm, this truth is different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because an, an, another, you know, another, well, Emmanuel is different because truth would have been, you know, out of the, the 45 minute <laughs> exegesis. <laughs> exegesis right. of yeah. here's all the reasons why y'all need to, you see what I mean? Um, but I think it's just a lot more wisdom now and how to do what we do and whether to do it at all. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're going to close here. I just want to clap for the audience. Thank you, guys. They've been here. They've been, mm, they've been mm, pushing us. The Amen Corner. Um, favorite moments from the album? Favorite moments from the album? Favorite songs or favorite moments? All right, I'm going to go with my favorite song. Okay, so, go with favorite song. <laughs> Fred Hammond. Oh. Doof. Come to the police party, y'all. People know me on the surface. Oh. They don't understand the plot. Uh. I'm not big enough to worship. Uh. If you can put me in the box. Oh, oh that's the first line. <laughs> and that's you speaking as God. As God. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again. Uh, people love me on the surface. They don't understand the plot. I ain't big enough to worship. If you could put me in a box. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like working with Fred Hammond? Oh, man. You know him. Oh, that's, that's Unk. Yeah. <laughs> Unk! Um, you know, I love, I love Fred because he really is Unk. You know, I, I flew to um, Dallas. And so, first of all, Unk don't come out for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> he don't be doing features. You don't see him doing nothing. Yeah. Which he told me. He did. <laughs> He's like, I love you, nephew. Because I don't do that. Because not only did he do the feature. Clear. <laughs> she said clear. Clear. <laughs> That's exactly. I love you, nephew. Not only did he do the feature, but then I flew to Dallas, and he did a two-hour interview with me, like this. Wow. Just a conversation. We just sat and talked. Legends. Oh, crazy. And I'm like, the whole time I'm like, see, because here's the thing. Even though... These are my friends. I still honor them too. Yes. I still feel, I feel the way, listen, pages of life saved my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> but you, it's weird because you'd be like, oh, pages of life. And you know, he just, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, nephew. <laughs> it's like, like, you don't want to pour it on too thick. All right. Like, <laughs> Kim Burrell. All right, all right. Kim Burrell. How was it? Kim, um, another one. She don't come up with <laughs> You know, Kim is the big sis. The reason why that was so uh, such a significant moment is because that was round three. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I have been trying since like 2017. I think I tried to get her on. It's complicated. 2016. Wow. I've been trying to get her on a record. And um, were y'all in the studio together? She, no, she and I weren't in the studio together. How did, so how did that? Oh, she went to the studio. So she was in D.C. at the time. Yeah. And so when I hit her about it, I think she was in Dallas. She was traveling a bunch. And then once she got settled, she was in D.C. for a couple of days. And so she, she said, um, she told me, she was like, um, son, I got you. As soon as I get to D.C., I got like two, three days, I'm going to run up in the studio and take care of it. 
And so she's sending you vocals back. Yeah, yeah, sending me vocals. She sent, you know, and I got video footage of her in the studio. I'm like, this is Kim doing my record, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yolanda Adams. I, Yolanda, I couldn't believe I was hearing her voice when I got the vocals back. Mm -hmm. Woo! You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, this is rotting through the storm. <laughs> 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 P.J. Morton. P.J. Morton. I don't even know what to say about P.J. And like, y'all was together at the Grammys this we year. We were. Y'all was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, love you, bro. He walked up to you and started singing the song. So, so, so P.J. walked up to me. So here's the crazy thing about social media. I think I met everybody already. And I didn't. I didn't. Like, y'all, all my friends, we text back and forth all day. We talk. We FaceTime. And I ain't never meet you. I, and, I, and but you can't tell me I didn't meet you. Right. I don't realize I didn't meet you until I meet you. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this is. I'm so used to talking to PJ. Yeah. I didn't realize I'd never met him. Yeah. And so. <laughs> wow. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, first Samo was there. So I don't know if y'all know Samo, but with Samo, you know Samo. <laughs> so with Samo, which was which I didn't realize Samo did brand new off the vet record. Okay. So me. Oh I, oh oh the vocalist. Yeah, he's the vocalist. Got it. Got I it. Seen Samo, I know you talking about. Listen, Samo, FaceTime, the whole thing. You can't tell me I didn't meet him until I. Met him. No, oh, hey, I'm like, you taller you, than what? Bro, you seven three. <laughs> bro, you tall as Jax, bro. Right. I felt like real insecure when I got, because I didn't have my Tim's on either. <laughs> I'm shaking his hand at his stomach. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a moment. Okay, so, so it's Samo and, and PJ's right here. And so I, when I, when I come through and I'm like, oh, I see Mo Samo. Oh, ah. well, wait, we're talking a little bit. He just moves. So I'm asking him about his move and the whole thing. And um, I turned my attention to PJ, and PJ was like, these gray hands, they, <laughs> they keep, keep going. <laughs> I was like, they keep going. <laughs> and PJ, mm -hmm. uh, he supported that song. He shared it on his Insta. He did. He shared it on he his Insta. Insta. We're in the process yeah. of talking through, shooting the visual for it. Yeah. Um, Tell us briefly, that song's about what? That, that song is probably the most important song on their album in terms of like how it's connecting. Um, so it's, it's universal and everybody's loving it. So I think we're gonna do a lot with it. Um, the song is essentially is about uh, aging gracefully. Um, you know, because it's the benefit of kind of being the young OG in the game. Um, you know, it, you know, as I was, as I've gotten older, there's a lot of questions you have to ask, particularly as a hip hop artist which is, you know, who am I going to be? What am I going to do? What's going to be my sound? And there's what's trending in the stream. And I don't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't really make dance music like that. I don't really make music that make, I ain't a little Uzi Vert. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> right, right. I, can't, right, I, can't, yeah. I don't have nothing to make, I have nothing to make nobody do that. And so, um, yeah, but, not, but neither am I, you know, some of the patriarchs that, you know, kind of led the way for people like myself. So I sit right in the middle, in the middle child. And with that, you know, there's a determination about who, who you need to be. And for me, it's just own the space that you're in. And, you know, even though I'm the, I'm the oldest artist on the bill and on the stage, <laughs> but I'm on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I think um, the beautiful thing is that when we're off the stage, see, the beautiful thing about own, taking ownership of who you are and where, what station of life you're in is not about what's on the stage, because we're going to do the same thing on the stage. You're going to rock the crowd, I'm going to rock the crowd in different ways. What the benefit is what's going to happen after. Because when we get in that green room, you got life experiences at 25 that I've seen and I've been through <laughs> and I've experienced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Um, and, and questions that I can answer and things that I can speak to and things that I can say, mm, I never figured it out to, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, Places, spaces that I've navigated through, and things that I've experienced in this industry that they haven't been, they haven't been there yet. And so I think there's something beautiful about aging gracefully, and by that I just mean taking ownership of the fact that you're getting older, that the gray hair is coming in. Um, I think that, and we talked about this even at the church, the the, the wisdom of the gray hair. Is Story necessary. Church Atlanta. Story Church Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Story Church. <laughs> If you in the A, <laughs> holler at us. What the world needs is young legs and gray hair. Mm -hmm. We need the mobilization of the young legs, the fervor, the zeal, the drive, 
Now, I can stay up 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, you know, and the wisdom and the experience of the gray hair. And once we come to that realization, you know, in a culture of ageism where everybody's like trying to, it's not just Be about young. preserving your youthfulness. I think that's different. Yeah. It's trying to preserve your, it's trying to stay young. That's different. Mm -hmm. Trying to stay young is not the same as preserving youthfulness. Right. Youthfulness is vitality. Yeah. <laughs> I still can, I still got the life of a 25 year old. <laughs> right, right. Um, the spirit, you know what I mean? But, um, but to try to stay young, all these fillers and da da da, and everybody's just doing all kinds of weird stuff to their bodies just to try to stay young, you know. And so for me, it's like, nah, I ain't really trying to stay young, you know. But now they're my, because I got homies that's like 33 and 34 years old, like, oh, I'm old, doc. And I'm like, bro, you are not. <laughs> you're, 30. That's the, you're 33, bro. Like, please stop <laughs> acting like that. <laughs> Let's end here. Yeah. <laughs> Last question, um, what does this album mean to you? Um, to me, this album is the beginning of a new chapter of my life. Wow. Yeah. It's, if you thought you knew, Keep reading. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> We just wrapped the interview, first ever episode of yes. The Narrative yes. with The Truth. Mm -hmm. Now, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. bro, where can they get the album and how can they follow you? Um, you can get the album everywhere they stream music. Yeah. You can download the album on iTunes. Yeah. Now, I will say this as a caveat, um, on Spotify, it's under compilations. So I think that's important. Yes. But <laughs> everywhere else, you just stream it like normal or you can download it on iTunes. So they type in The Truth and yeah. then find the album Emmanuel. Absolutely. I love it. Yes. And Social. then my socials yeah. are The Truth On Duty. That's yeah. everywhere. That's it. The Truth On Duty. That's Keep it. rocking with us. <laughs> <laughs>